Hi guys, I'm Cordy and this is part two of my not so creepy crawly video. If you want to know how to draw these guys, then please pop on over part one of the video. We are going to add some color to these guys and we're going to start with the dragonfly. Now my color medium of choice is watercolor. Here is my set of colors. You can also use watercolor out of tubes if you like. I prefer to use two brushes, a bigger one and a very tiny small one and this dish to dilute my colors with water. For our dragonfly, we need a earthy brown, a light blue, a bright blue, and sort of a blue grayish color. So starting out with the light blue, I am going to color in the, just the tips of the wings and keeping it nice and wet, I'll grab the blue, the darker blue, brighter blue color and just drop it in to that wet area. Now for the center, I'm bringing out that blue grayish color and in the middle between those, I drop in that brown and you just want to make sure that everything's sort of blending into each other, which is nice to do with the watercolor because the wetter you keep it, the better. Now just dark darkening the center there a little bit. Now to avoid having the color flowing into each other when it's not supposed to flow into each other we're gonna dry the color a little bit with a blow dryer because just sitting and waiting is just too boring and next we're going to go back to our bright blue color and color in the head and the little markings on the back all the way down to the tail just giving it a light blue first layer then we'll go back to the bright blue and just add a little bit of shadow there on the head and also inside the marking just dropping in a little bit into the wet area of that uh, bright blue and then we're gonna switch over again to the brown and layer that into the side areas there as well where the shadow is just to make it look a bit more interesting also in the markings you can add a little bit of that brown where the shadow of the wings falls. I really do have a bit of a love and hate relationship with watercolor because it really sometimes has a mind of its own and uh, when it doesn't really do what I want it to do it just turns out to be a surprise. More often or not it's a good surprise um, so it's making art by accident which can be very exciting too but I'll show you later on how I add a little bit more of control to my watercolor painting. Now for the background I just use the leftover colors in my little tray with lots and lots of water and making sure that they all mix and blend together. So down at the bottom I've got a bit more brown at the top a bit more blue and I also prefer to have that background sort of fade into the white of my page. Now my favorite bit is using salt with watercolor. You just sprinkle a little bit on it and I'll show you that cool effect that it does. Going here to the other side, blending it into the white of the page with lots and lots of water and of course a little more salt. And then this is the effect you get these like marbled white dots, which is really cool. Now to integrate the dragonfly itself into the background, I'm going to add a bit of a shadow around the edges. And uh, also you want to make sure that you really blend those into the background there with lots of water. And when you're done, you want to make sure that you either let it dry or use the hairdryer again. So you end up with a dry piece of art. To add my secret little tip or my secret little technique that I use with watercolor to just up the contrast a little bit, I use pastel pencils or you can just use pastels in a stick. And the black one, I always use a charcoal pencil because it's a bit softer. And to up the contrast, I just add a tiny little bit of extra color just to give the eye this, this idea there's a bit more intensity, a bit more brightness here in the blue, just on a couple of points in the wings here and in the markings there as well. 
the white pastel I just bring out those highlights a bit more on the head there and also on the markings maybe on the corners a little little bit of an extra highlight and then the brown also gets a little turn here just to give that sort of marbled effect in the wings and on the head just on a couple of cut couple of spots a couple of places to let the eye go deeper and then all around the edges there I'm going to use the charcoal pencil just to make it look a little a little deeper and also with the watercolor as it always is sometimes it doesn't blend as it's supposed to so with this um, charcoal pencil you can just go in and make the transitions a bit smoother to me it's really like correcting whatever the watercolor didn't do that I wanted it to do now the last step is getting some highlights in there with my white Posca pen. I'll just add a couple of dots in the wings to make it look a bit more delicate in that light blue area. Next the legs get a little bit of a shine too. And the head, I'll add a couple of dots in the white areas of the head just to intensify that highlight. And then at the very end, it's a good idea to have a look at all the lines because using the pastel um, pencils sometimes covers up the black lines. So I like to use my new favorite brush pen to just go in there and have a look and, and darken some of the lines just to be sure that the contrast is there. Now that was our dragonfly. Let's move on to our beetle. For the beetle, we'll need yellow some orange, blue green, and also a bit of that bright blue. We're going to start out with yellow though, and we're only going to color in the areas of our beetle that we want to be the lightest and brightest. Now the next color is green that comes in the rainbow so that will mix in with the yellow very slightly and then the color after that is the blue that makes up the darkest part of our beetle which is on the outside there and then in the center of the head as you see the watercolor does what it wants to but we're gonna let it we we're gonna be relaxed and excited about the outcome so the outside and the inside here of the head and the very edge up there on the little pincers you just want to make sure that the green the blue and the yellow blend into each other nicely let the watercolor do its thing now with the paint wet we're going to go into the orange and drop a little bit of orange into the yellow to make it glow nice and warm only on the body and the head not really up at the pincers it's a bit too small just making sure it all blends in nicely now I'm going to go back to my favorite brush pen just to darken and blacken out those areas right under the head there and then for the arms I'm choosing that blue gray ish color that we used before for our dragonfly just going along the arms giving it that first layer of color now after trying the whole watercolor business i am going back to my pastel pencils you see there were different colors now but i'm um, starting out with the white just to correct some of the blending there there was a bit of a dark spot in the green so I used white first and then the green and then adding a little bit of yellow just to brighten up that yellow a little bit especially in the tiny areas of the pincers just glows a bit more and the, the white pastel pencil is really helpful to just bring out some more brightness and the dark one the dark blue one here it's like a midnight blue um, pencil it really gets those dark areas popping and making sense of the whole texture of the beetle now for the background I'm doing the very same thing as I did for our dragonfly 
just using the leftover colors and blending them into each other, green and blue. And of course, also sprinkling a little bit of salt into the wet paint and then blending the rest of the background into the white of the page. Now, very important, drying it or letting it dry. And then you can see the beautiful effect that the salt made. Now going around the edges again with a gray color to make the bug pop off the page. Now after this is dry, I like to go in again with my charcoal pencil just to darken the very edge a little bit. And our beetle also gets some extra highlights on the little hairs on his legs and then a little dots in the lighter areas just to make it pop and make it a little more interesting. The last finishing touches with a brush pen just to make sure that all the lines or the black lines are visible and then we're done. Now let's move on to our moth. Now, yes, you're right, I could have chosen a butterfly for this, but to be fully honest, I think the moths are much more interesting. They have much more interesting markings and believe it or not, they're very colorful. Colors for a moth are pink, purple, yellow, a gray and a brown. Start with our pink right here at the center, the lower part of the hair, if you will, and the little horns. And then the purple is for the very bottom and the little eye-shaped markings. The area around the purple is going to be dark black. So I use my brush pen to make sure it's really dark. And then for the wings, I use the gray. They are not all the same kind of gray, so I'm using sort of the blue gray for the top part of the wings and the bottom part. I'm going to just dilute a little bit of black, but here as you see at the tips of the wings, they're a little bit more opaque and then the side wings are a bit more translucent. Little ears, or at least they look like ears, are going to be brown in that lighter brown tone and the rest, the top bit of the hairdo, <laughs> it looks a little bit like a hairdo. I'm going to also use that diluted black color. You can very nicely see that the gray on the top wings is more like a bluish gray mixed in with a black with a bit of blue and um, the gray for the hair and the bottom of the wings is more just a diluted black color right out of the tube or the little cup. So the lines on the moth are supposed to be gold. So I'm just going to use my yellow and leave some white areas there. So the white looks like a reflection and makes the yellow even brighter. It also goes for the lines there on the bottom. Just adding a little bit of yellow to make it look shiny. Now below those lines on the purple markings, we're gonna add another layer of purple and just along those vertical lines and keeping the center bit light with the lighter purple. Now for the hair, we're gonna go back into our pink and also give it another layer, just doing up and down strokes to give the hair a little bit of texture there. And then I'm switching to my pastel pencils, giving the hair a bit more detail as you see here, just to make it look a little bit more textured. And I also like to go over that gold bit a little more to emphasize those white areas to make it even more shiny. And on the lower part of the wings, I'm grabbing a very light purple pencil, pastel pencil, and just adding a bit of a, like a purple shade to that gray area around those eye-shaped markings. And remember we left that, that lighter purple on the bottom uh, markings there. I'm just using the white 
pastel to add a little bit of contrast and the gray one as well just to go along the lines a little bit to to get out that contrast to make it even more interesting and below that purple area i do the very same thing i add the white in the center and with the gray pastel pencil i'll just go around the edges of those little sections there to just bring them out a bit more lightest lights and the darkest darks the darkest darks are done with my brush pen i'll just go into the hair a little bit and bring out the finer detail there was a lot of pastel pencil used so sometimes those lines get fuzzy and then the Posca pen, the white, just brings out a couple of strands as highlights, especially in the black here in the middle section. On the actual moth that I was looking at, that bit was actually gold, so technically you could go over that white um, with a little bit of yellow if you like but I'm keeping it white, a little bit of extra highlights there on the hairy bits, on those eye shapes or eye markings, and making sure that that gold in the lines is quite shiny. I'll add a little bit of, a couple of dots of white as well. Now the background for our moth is, again, using the leftover colors, the pink and the gray, and going around that big shape with the darker color I'm already on using the charcoal pencil here. And in this case, I'm also going to go around the entire shape with a brush pen just to make it a bit more crisp. And this is our moth. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you had fun and I could inspire you a little bit on dabbling around with watercolor and pastel pencils. Pop on over to my channel and subscribe for some more sketchbook adventures. Let's draw together again soon. Happy sketchbooking. Have a great day. Bye!